Hey, this is James Zapp from the Dapper Den Barbershop in Ridgefield, Connecticut. I am obviously not at the barbershop right now. I am in my new home. I just moved. So uh, what better way to break in the new place than to cut your own hair in it? So I decided to cut my own hair in it. Uh, I'm wearing a hat now, so you can't see what the finished product was. You have to watch the whole video to see that. And uh, let's take a look. So my haircut is probably one of the easier ones to do at home because I do an undercut. So right now I'm finding my hard part that I usually have that you can see. So uh, I'm trying to slick my hair back, finding out where the part is. When I first started this, I was going to do a, like a one to a two, but I decided uh, later on, you'll see, I just decided to do a one and a half. Right now I'm just taking hair clips just to get my hair out of the way. My hair is extremely curly and it's got a lot of uh, volume. Uh, so I just need to keep it down. I have difficulty getting the clips in and my cowlick in the back is all over the place. So I just had to keep it down as best as possible. Uh, so I'm just using a black gold effects. I uh, just kind of modified it, made some new colors on it, which is cool. Taper blade, which you'll find out actually didn't help me in this whole video, and I'll explain about that uh, later. It would have been easier to use a fade blade. Uh, so I'm taking a two, and I'm just taking that last tooth, and I'm going right where the line is. So it's basically trying to get every bit of hair that's up at that line uh, out of the way. So I have a good base for myself. And now I'm just taking the clippers and I'm just going up the side, going slow up by the part so I don't take any of the long hairs out. And I'm doing the exact same thing on the other side, just taking that last tooth and going across the top. So right here, I decided that I didn't want to do a two because it wasn't really taking off any bulk. So I switched to a uh, one clip fully open, which is about a little bit under a uh, one and a half, just like a tiny bit. And I'm just doing the same thing. I'm going, uh, I'm trying to go against the grain as much as possible to get all the hairs off. And uh, same thing with the part, just going right up to that line. The best advice I can give you if you decide to do this, which again, I'm recommending you not do, is to um, have a mirror in the back of you so you can see what's happening. Have multiple mirrors. If you have the side mirrors, I did have a small um, trifold mirror, but it didn't really help as much as I thought it would. But I'm doing the same thing on the side. I'm going as high up as possible just to that part and just trying to get all that stuff up. You see there's a big piece of bulk that I'm missing right up there. I go back eventually and I get that. So this is the hardest part, was doing the back of my head. What I'm doing with my uh, left hand is I'm feeling where my hair gets longer in the back because of the undercut. And I'm going very slowly and delicately to make sure I don't go up into my cowlick or anything like that. And I just kind of bring it all the way up to where I can kind of feel my hand. I'm using my hand as a stop almost so I don't have to. So, so I don't go too high. I can't even speak English. This quarantine's killing me. Uh, biggest thing, this is what I do. You'll see me do this a lot with the whole thing. I am constantly going back over, back over, back over, back over with it. I need to make sure that I got all the hair off and there's not any random lengths. You can still see it's cutting a little bit more. I'm going different angles, different sides, just to make sure I got all the hair cut. I do not recommend anybody doing this. This is really hard. So I do have a mirror here that I can kind of see the back of my head. Not really well. So you can see I didn't really go that high with it because I'm being more careful. Also, you will notice my neck is red. That is not irritation. I promise you those clips are very soft that I use, those red ones. Uh, that I got sunburned. I was working outside because I have nothing else to do. So I was building sound absorbers for myself and I got sunburned on my back of my neck. So that's not irritation. I would tell you if it's irritation. I don't know if there is irritation in this somewhere, but I will let you know if I do see it. So now I'm gonna outline the beard. I'm pulling it, cause I like a natural look to my beard. I'm pulling the hairs uh, into my face just so I can see the line relatively. And then I'm just using the corner of that T-blade just to go up around the ear to make sure that I get uh, all those little hairs that I might've missed with the one and a half or I couldn't reach. And I do the same thing on the other side. Yeah. 
And now I'm just doing the, uh, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> so you can see I'm freaking out. Uh, I couldn't do a hard line on the back of my head because I couldn't see. So I'm just taking the clippers and just getting all the hairs off the side of my neck just to make it look a little bit cleaner. So now I'm doing the top of the, uh, the beard, just kind of outlining it. If you've had your beard lined up before, uh, the great thing is you can already see the line. You're just going to bring that blade. That blade is pretty sharp on a T-liner, and I'm bringing it and just touching the top of the line. And same thing with the mustache. I don't like a thin mustache. Obviously, I have a walrus-style mustache. I want to keep as much as possible, but I do have some uh, smaller hairs up at the top that I don't like. You can see there's still a little bit of bulk up at the top. You can actually see it right from there, the back of my head, the crown. If anyone has watched the Dapper Den video, we don't keep the crowns. That's a big thing. We don't like the crowns. All right, so um, that's just a low maintenance thing. With an undercut, you really don't need a crown, personally, in my opinion. Again, this is just my opinion. This is not uh, subjective, it's object. I'm sorry, it's not objective, it's subjective. Just going back in with the one and a half clip just to make sure that I get uh, everything cut. I don't want any one hair too longer, and that's, that's an important thing if you're a barber anyway and you're cutting somebody else's hair. You always kind of want to go back over and make sure that you don't hear any clicking from the uh, the hair cutting, the clipper cutting the hair. And uh, just make sure that you got all the hairs. You wanna make sure it's a perfect, perfect canvas for yourself. So now I'm going a little bit higher. So this is where I can talk about, you can see the bulk in the back of my head. The reason I said a fade blade would have worked better than a um, taper blade is because uh, a taper blade is kind of more beveled like this. So when you go to cut, it'll just kind of, um, how can I do this? Jeez, I can't even do this. So when you go to cut, it's gonna kind of see itself off almost a little bit more than a fade blade's a little bit flatter. So you kind of have to really force it. I think if I used a fade blade, I probably would have gotten that um, hair up at the top a little bit better. Although with the taper also, it probably blended it. Overall, I didn't do a good job on the back of my head. So I'm going to work on the beard right now. Uh, I like my beard big and fluffy. So I just want to keep it uh, as natural as possible, but I do want to get some of the straggle bits, as I call them, down. So I was just using a round brush. I'm just going to take an eight. Uh, also, a little plug here. Down. Beard Brand makes a dynamite boar's hair round brush that you can get that actually, uh, like, you can feel it grab your hair, which if you're straightening it, makes it feel much better like it's actually doing something as opposed to a plastic one would create static and everything yeah so that's a five i'm using and i'm just going with the grain just taking off uh the ends and a little bit of bulk and again when i'm uh my face is kind of curved in like this when i'm taking the clipper i'm just kind of trying to go straight out like this as much as possible so it kind of creates a little bit more of a fade and this i'm not even pressed up against my chin i'm just kind of just gradually just bringing it down Can you see the fear in my eyes? So I can. All right, so right here, uh, my neckline is terrible. I haven't had a straight razor shave on my neckline in about six months. No, more than that. It was my brother's wedding. It was June of last year. So um, I'm just trying to get a general shape for myself. I don't have to worry too much about a hard line because you can't even see my neck, really. Uh, I have terrible, terrible cowlicks underneath there. And you can see how difficult it is for me to even see with that much beard. But again, the best advice I can give you on cutting your own hair, your beard, your neckline, anything, less is more. You can always put on more. If you go too far, you can't put it back on. And that's just a general rule of barbering. So the less you do, the better, because you can always bring it up. Okay. Here I can give you, there's irritation on my neck. I have an extremely sensitive neck when it comes to blades. So this is irritation, I can tell you that. And now just at the bottom, I'm just kind of taking a couple of the straggles off at the bottom.
So I'm just gonna wet my hair now and just kind of just take off a little bit of weight. Yeah, I got a lot of grays in there, man. I'm getting old. Turned 30 this year. That's pretty cool, right? I mean, that's the big 3-0. 30, flirty, and thriving. I love 13 going on 30. It's a great film. If you're watching, uh, <laughs> if you're still quarantined, you should check it out. I guarantee it's on Netflix or Hulu. Uh, Mark Ruffalo's in that. That's a dynamite film. So the main thing with this is with an undercut, I wasn't trying to take off any length really. I was just trying to just chop up the tips. What's great about an undercut or is that, that to quote my boss and everyone's gonna yell at me for this, is it doesn't have to be perfect. It's, you don't want a straight line going across your head if your hair were to fall. You want it to be a little bit staggered, different size, uh, different angled cuts, which is good because it doesn't make a hard line. It makes a nice jagged line, I think looks better. So you can see I'm just kind of combing it over to the side, combing it to each side, and I'm using uh, texturizing shears right now. So I'm just trying to add just the tips, just getting a little bit of texture in there, taking out a little bit of weight. So that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna tape it because it's gonna be too much work. Uh, I'm gonna do it up real quick though. So now I'm just using a little bit of pomade in my hair uh, just to keep it down, uh, slicking it straight back, kind of like a um, Brad Pitt and Fury kind of look. One thing I can tell you to take away from this, if you can hold off until your barbershop is open, hold off until your barbershop is open. This is a difficult process. Again, I've been cutting for a long time and this is really hard. Uh, it came out okay for my liking. I, um, it came out softer up here. This is about grown out. I think this is only a day. Uh, so it grew out pretty nice. Uh, the hair feels definitely lighter on the top. Beard feels a lot cleaner. Lines are much better and easy for me to follow now. If you are gonna do this, especially if you're lining up your beard, you're doing your outline here just to feel a little bit cleaner, less is more. Uh, so that's it, that's the haircut. Uh, thank you so much for the barbers from Beard Brand. Thank you so much for Beard Brand. Keep a look out for the barber coming next week, which is gonna be great. Love to see what they're doing. And uh, thank you so much for the Dapper Den Barbershop in Ridgefield.